What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Erica, from the Classy Clown blog. Starting a little earlier than I wanted, but I just had to go to this one. Uh, I always talk about military towns being the multiverse. I talk about certain, you know, uh, government cities being the multiverse, like D.C., Washington, D.C., parts of Florida. And the reason I bring this up all the time is because people will give you these terrible stats. Everybody's broke. Everybody's poor. No one's living well. And then you actually start dissecting what city they're from. And you're like, you're from a nowhere armpit. Of course your town sucks. Of course your life sucks. Or we start like really dissecting what it is they're saying sucks about their life. But before we start doing that, this is your girl Erica from the Classic On Blog. If you could please drop your city and state in the chat, we'd highly appreciate that here at the Classic Line. It allows us to pick out ideals and things for us to do. Now, this isn't just me doing anecdotal stories or research. This is stuff you can actually physically see and the numbers are there to support it. Uh, I remember when I first moved to Texas in 2012, I, there was a couple there from Florida. And they were like, man, we're just tired of the energy in Florida because everybody's so depressed because of the recession. Now, this is 2012. Most people have come out of the recession, but some parts of Florida were still kind of in it. And I get it. They had a hat, got, they got hit pretty hard. Not as bad as Arizona, right? Arizona was hit the worst at the time. And so, you know, just having the conversation. And, and of course, when I started talking to them, I realized they were in their 50s, almost 60s. But they had the mindset and the energy attitudes of 20, 30 year olds. And this was reflected again to me. This past week, I went back home to North Carolina. I was awarded three awards for my business, and I'm, I'm very proud about that. And I will send you guys pictures, and we'll do a video on it, and I'll, like, take a – I'm going to do some poses, some pictures with the awards. Um, it's always good to be recognized when you do hard work. You know, just put that there. And what's funny about military towns and, and parts of Florida, right? We used to watch the Golden Girls growing up. You're like, man, these old people saw your dating and cutting up. Yes. 40 to 70 years old, no different than 20 to 30s. <laughs> it is the same song and dance, just older, fatter sometimes, or depends on life, right? Money, right? So, so again, now I'm not talking about, you know, the guy or girl that's walking around waddling, can barely walk, on medication up to the eyeballs, struggling, can't breathe like, ooh. But can't breathe. I'm not talking about them. I'm not talking about the guy or girl that lives with their grandma because they broke. I'm not talking about them. What I'm talking about is an adult who who's kind of figured out life and is working, right? I went to the military town and my mom is in her 60s. And several of her military women friends are also in their 60s. But if you get up in the morning, you see them walking. Um, they're they're going to exercise classes. You know, they, they drop grandkids off at summer camps. They doing what they do, right? They getting it in. And every single one of these women, white, black, and a uh, half Asian, had boyfriends. And I don't mean raggedy boyfriends. I don't mean no teeth in their mouth, sugar daddy kind of situation. Actual, like, black men who had homes, who had pensions from the military, and doing okay, right? They were, they were extravagantly living. They do some events. They go to downtown. They go some dates together. And so I was laughing because if you really sit on the internet, which you shouldn't, you think that after 40, the wall is over, your life is over, you should just go jump off a bridge, right? And that's because we live in America that's super youth obsessed. In America, from 15 to 25, that's all we want to talk about. And so we have lack of movies that reflect that. We have lack of culture. Um, I'm a big watcher, and this is because of my ex, who had a British mother. Yes, uh, you take that information what you will. I watched a ton of BBC TV. And I mean, I was so blown away that how all the British actors aren't considered greats until they're in their 40s, 50s, and 60s still acting. Like, they, they, I'm sorry, they're, they're not. And still being productive, like really great acting, really great TV shows. You know, you used to think Matt Lott was good. You ain't seen that until you seen some of these British television where, you know, somebody's an old detective and they can put them out to pasture in a small town. And guess what? Small towns have same problems as big towns, right? So it's, it's a common thing. But anyway. And what I wanted to say is, as I was walking around the military town, the people in their 40s and 50s are still buying trucks, still buying Jeep Wranglers, still wearing nice clothes, still shopping, still doing life. And so my biggest concern to y'all when I have this channel and I talk to people is like, a, 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 a item that stays in motion, stays in motion, basically, right? Like, if you're doing pretty well, if you don't make huge financial bad decisions, Man, you'll be all right, right? 
And, you know, you're not supposed to squander your 20s. There you go. Get, look at you read my mind. You're not supposed to squander your 20s or 30s by no means. But a lot of people's 20s or 30s will just coast them and set them for the rest of their life. And what do I mean by that? The, the people you're meeting, the colleges you go to. I know so many people went to the wrong college, married the wrong woman. But now they're 35, 39. Guess what? They done lost some weight. They got a new tech job. You know, it's their first time entering tech in their 40s. They're looking at work differently than you. You, you don't, you'll you quit in a minute. You'll be Gen X. You'll quit in a minute if, you're, if you're, uh, your boss don't talk to you the way you want. But these people are hitting their 40s. And now it's like they got a second stride. That's why it's never a surprise to me when you see a man who had kids young in life come back later and have more kids. Because he's in a different mindset. He's in a more, uh, what do you call it, abundance and surplus. Right? But 20s and 30s do matter. Okay, don't don't get it twisted, but you don't, it's not over. Life isn't over because you're in your 40s and 50s. It's not over by any means. There are a lot of people who are um, retired and living their best life ever, right? Just to say that. Now, again, what are the three things that will take you out of the game? 90% of the time, let me just put it to you this way. I know y'all going to hate me. Obesity, drugs, and tattoos. The only location you can kind of get away with some of that is in some military towns, right? Right? Some of that. But mostly anywhere you go in life, if you start getting, I'm talking about 400 pounds, you can't get out your car, you you on a scooter, you know, you, you want to get an office job, but you got tattoos all on your neck, on your face. It ain't happening, right? You know, uh, drugs in general, anyway, um, even though our society is trying to get more lax, it, most people aren't, right? So, what I started realizing is the more people I watched from my mom's older age group, they were literally living the same life when we were younger kids. Now they're just, they're just kid free. That's it. Uh, and don't take my word for it. Look at Tim out of Sarasota. Um, he, he does a really great thing about Florida and retirees. Like take your retirement at 62. I don't care what these people say, which is hilarious to me, but it's true. Take your retirement at 62. Take it. Don't, don't sit here and tell me you're trying to save till 70. And then you can get side jobs, 1099 little positions. Um, I have one family member who, and I'm not trying to be funny, he moved down from New York, just like my older uncle. He moved down from New York because he went blind, medication and a bad surgery. He went blind, but he got money. Why? He's got a pension. He's got some other stuff. And guess what? He's still talking and dating ladies. Now you're going to say, Erica, how is a blind man talking and dating ladies? <laughs> and it's, it's, he's 70, 71. Easy. He's fit. He's walking around. He's dressed pretty well. He goes to the bingo games. He goes to the different, you know, recreational event places. You know, and he's walking at the park. You know, and I think he's, he's, he's you know, um, is blind enough, right? And and so people would be like, "Oh, it's over for him," but it's not. <laughs> That's just. I keep trying to get y'all to understand that, like, it's better to while you're young, and you got the energy. Let's try to get our retirement tightened up a little bit. But when I hear people fight me day and night about buying a house, I just go, good luck. Good luck. Because every story, if you go on Bigger Pockets, you go on uh, Old Dogs Network, you go on any of these old channels, all right, uh, and you look up what are older people, where they get their retirement, where are they doing best, it's because they had some rentals or they had they, they their own home, they sold their home, and then they were able to move somewhere cheaper and live a quality of life because they sold that original home. And so I... I, I if Fedville and the military towns I know in the Southeast are the same. You have enough money to buy a little $80,000, three bedroom, two bath brick house in a pretty quiet neighborhood. You keep your grass cut. Now you can take your RV and roll on down the street and do what you want to do. Right now you, you know, you go to so many concerts a year, you go to me so many fe uh, festivals a year, you go to so many jazz concerts a year, you know, and you're just doing it without kids. So really that's, <laughs> that's the difference in the story, right? Is the kids aren't eating up the money. You can't blame the kids for what your life looks like at that point. Right? Somebody said every person I see who retired in an apartment got evicted. Exactly. I've never seen, um, and, and unless they're, they're in New York or somewhere, but whatever, I've never seen somebody retire who's living in an apartment do well. I just haven't. Now, now I will say, I will say this. Some rural, you know, country area duplexes and stuff like that in apartments, yes. I've seen some people in the Southeast where our family even owned some old duplexes and the, the older black people that lived there, they've been living there 10 plus years. Uh, my cousin had a house he bought for 35,000. The lady lived in it 15 years. 
she came down from New York and was like, I'm only going to be here a little while. I'm going back to New York. Well, 15 years later, my cousin went and sell her the house. So now she ended up uh, moving. But I come to find out she actually did move back north. She didn't move back to New York. She moved to New Jersey and took her mom, who at this point is like 90 years old in an old folks home with her. Okay. Um, because she wanted to get that clipped in, right? So <clears throat> the problem is <laughs> somebody said moving into a kid-free era is great. Yeah, there's a lot of content. Listen, listen. I know y'all don't believe me, but you can go search this all day. Type in stuff after 40, stuff after 50, retirement after 50, life after 50. Go on YouTube. See this stuff. It'll blow your mind. The empty nester market is huge. 40 to 70 years old, you got people like, yo, I'm fit. My body's great. I'm taking vitamins. I'm working out every day. I mean, there's dudes here on YouTube who are in Florida in their 60s and 70s. Now, they're not running around trying to chase 30-year-old women. They're chasing other fit and shape 50, 60-year-old women. Because you got to realize if you're a man in your 50, 60, 70, and you start chasing that high young thing that's 20, 20, 25, 30, 35, there's a possibility she'll get pregnant. There's the possibility of kids. There's the possibility of you have to put a lot more work than you want to do out. All right. So let's just let's just put it that way. OK. And so I, I do these videos and I talk about this stuff because life doesn't just stop because you hit an age limit. Oh, Erica, I'm 45. That doesn't mean anything. There's more women now than ever. Now they're they either got divorced or their kids are leaving on growing up. They're going back into the workforce. They're going into tech. They're going into government jobs. They're going in to get clearances. They're going in to get certification. Right. This, this is one of those things I keep telling y'all. Exactly. Young women want children. Yes. Even 40. Like, I know a couple right now, there's a 20-year difference. And she got him good. Okay? He was 61 when he married her. And she was 40. And she got pregnant. And so, it, it, him now, he's like 70. He be looking stressed as hell. But he, I think he's like 72. 70, that, kid, that kid's 11. It's about 72. I think he's about 72. So, so literally, he went and married a woman 20 years younger thinking, hey, cool retirement. Poop. That last window, they only got one kid. And he's a cool little boy. He just has old parents. He's you can tell from when you look at the little boy, he don't, he ain't doing a lot of activities. He's chilling. He ain't really doing sports. He just at the house watching TV with them. It's crazy. He's the oldest little 11 year old I ever met in my life, right? Okay. And so, um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. People act like 45, you're going to die in five years. It really isn't the case. Uh, like the, the <laughs> I keep telling people, like, uh, one of our flight instructors for the private pilot school up there, you know, the airlines put you out when you're about 55, 57. It's like a cutoff for flying. Well, now you're 57 years old and you're a pilot. What are you going to do? Well, nine times out of 10, they go into private sector or they go into teaching. And so now, you know, you're going to have every 20 plus years in your life you're going to change careers or you're going to change kind of your thought process. And to me, it's better when you're in your thirties and forties to go ahead and figure out majority of the money stuff, get a majority of that debt off your back, get a majority. Uh, because right now they're showing right now, Gen X has the highest student loan debt. Gen X are 42 to 57 or something like that. That's crazy. Right? So now they've got an additional 20 years of debt they're paying off. That's insane. Right? So, so don't act like, well, I'm 40. And, I, and my kids are grown now and life is just over. No, like you have this second, and, and I'm, I jokingly said in the title, you have this third high school because a lot of these people are like, I'm just going to buy the truck I want because I've always wanted a truck. Be damned about money, right? I just saw a woman delivering Amazon packages. 50-something-year-old woman in a Camaro. I'm like, baby, what's going on? <laughs> Sis, what's going on? You're gray. You're driving a Camaro. That is not even gas efficient. You're doing Amazon. But I'm proud of her because, hey, salute. She's doing something to try to, you know, keep the money moving. And so uh, even I have a, a couple uncles who are older men that retire. They get retirement checks. They started lawn care companies. They bought, they got the equipment used. They riding around all day in the truck. They don't cut a, a near inch of grass because their backs and knees ain't, ain't, ain't where they used to be. And so th their little workers are running around cutting grass and knocking on doors. And they just collecting the money in the truck. And this is very common. I see this all the time in Austin, and that's why I laugh when I was home. I was like, look at you out here. Um, you know, one of the guys has a little transportation company, so he bought himself a van. He's dropping people off to the airport. You know, just, just stuff to stay busy, but 
the majority of their their concerns are not there because what they bought a home a long time ago. They just modifying, cleaning up the home. They didn't go crazy with home sizes, right? Um, they got cars. Most cars paid off. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, a forty to seventy, it's a huge market to sell to people because they if they didn't build the wealth, if they're out, they're still going to Beyonce concerts. They're still going to jazz concerts and essence festivals. They still are going to be working. So it's like, let's really give it a good try. Like I was watching Aaron Clary today. And my thing is a lot of these 20, 30 year olds are depressed. That's just what it is. They're depressed. They're watching Instagram all day. They're comparing their life. How come he has a hot girlfriend and my girlfriend isn't hot? Dude, you're, you're five, four and you're overweight. Nobody cares. Just go to work, right? And so once you start getting older, a lot of that, oh, everybody looking at me, everybody cares what my wife looks like. No one cares what your wife looks like. We have a friend who got married at 45. He's like, I could give a rat's ass what anybody thinks about my wife. She at least likes me. And so you start getting older, you realize 40 to 70, it's just high school. <laughs> it's high school part three. Now you got some money and some people are being goofy and buying RVs and all this goofy stuff that makes no sense. I have a friend getting a $75,000 RV. I go, what are you going to do with it? Well, I can rent it out when I'm not there. Dude, you're not going to want other people in your freaking RV. Don't lie. You know what I mean? Um, and so it's like, you know, when people fight with me about housing prices, Eric, you don't understand the interest rates, the interest rates. These are the same people turning around buying a $75,000 RV, buying a $75,000 brand new SUV truck, buying boats, and buying goofy mess the time they can't afford a house. These are the same people. That's why I don't even take it serious. But I'm telling you, go look at some of these YouTube channels. When these people move to Florida or they move to military towns, they have a good life. Again, don't, don't, don't come on here with, well, my mom is, no, listen, listen. Your mom's waddling down the street. If your dad has got an auction to say about to die, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the bulk of Americans who are 40 to 70 and they're going to still be working. We were in Las Vegas. Our Uber driver was a, a architect. He was like, well, I just was bored at the house. I'm 72 and I, I still can do stuff. And it's like, all right, you're going to see more than ever these guys, you know, create low tech businesses or get tech certs and go in the office a couple of days a week. And they'd be the only principal there in the office all the time because, again, a lot of these boomers, they didn't plan, you know, <clears throat> for retirement. They didn't plan to live forever. Right. And a lot of people are going to live to 90 plus. Like I was laughing at Aaron's laugh because he was saying how oh, some of these dudes are almost 70 years old, but they saved up enough money to with their Harley to go to Sturgis. Right. And if you don't know what Sturgis is, uh, Sturgis is a, a big, crazy thing they do in Wyoming. It's hundreds of thousands of motorcycles, and it's it's redneck craziness on steroids. It's pretty cool. I mean, I wouldn't go because I don't want to get beat up or found dead somewhere. But I think it's it's cool that old redneck mo <laughs> motorcycle riding and some Mexicans. I've seen some Mexicans out there. Um, go to Sturgis. Good. Great. Same thing with Essence Festival. Same thing now. There's a, a big push on the internet for um, basically mini essences. That's what I call them. They're like, oh, we're going to be in Bahamas listening to Jill Scott da, 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 on stage live in December. Oh, we're going to be on these cruise with Tom Joyner. Oh, we're going to be in Jamaica and these artists are going to play. It's basically a jazz festival in another country. That's all it is. It's a jazz festival in another country. And so what you're seeing and what you're witnessing is a lot of these 40 to 70 year old people, now they got money, the debt's under control, the kids aren't eating them out of house and home. What do they do with their time? Right? The people sit down doing nothing, not moving, they're getting stiff, they're getting old. But everybody else that's keep moving, keep life full, keep, you know, being active, they're going to keep getting boys. They're going to keep having life. They're going to keep getting jobs, starting little businesses. And and they don't they don't have the thirst. Let's just go there. They don't have the thirst of a twenty something year old. I gotta show you I'm flying on jets and all this other. You know how many times I've flown on private plane and I didn't take pictures. I'm gonna do one this weekend. I'm gonna take some pictures because people are like somebody in one of the comments was like, "Oh, Eric, are you sitting in coach on the plane? Oh, you goofy ass broad! I'm sitting in first class. The kids in the first row, so they stick their hand back and they ask me for some chips, and I said no. So you know, it's funny because. That's a status thing you're seeking. Well, Erica can't be that great. That fucking hoe. Like, no, like you're angry with me because whatever reason, and it's coming out subconsciously in your comments, and that's okay. But just realize why I started realizing that is 
the thirst of 20, 30 somethings to be right. I'm at a point where I don't care if you think I'm right. Life is proving me right. You know what I'm saying? Life, the longer I live, is proving me right. Right? This past week, I went and did a bunch of sauna and it reset my body. Like, I went to bed every night at 10 o'clock, no problem. And all this, you know, health alternatives that people make fun of. The longer you live and you actually try some of the stuff, you, you, you realize they were right. You, you start eating healthier, doing more juices because your stomach can't take dairy no more. Some of y'all getting older. It, it's, it's proven it right. Life is proven it right. All right. So um, <laughs> let me read some of your comments. But but some of the things people always say, well, Erica's because it's a cherry town. That's not realistic of every town. I really want you to examine what city you're in. And there was a joke someone made about Atlanta. And at first I didn't think about it, but now I do. He's like, Atlanta's not a bunch of... Sorry. He goes, Atlanta's full of a bunch of 50 year olds acting like they're 30. And I thought about it for a while. I was like, damn, he's right. I, no matter how many times I go to Atlanta, I meet a bunch of what well, to do black people, but they're in their 50s acting like they're 30. And I see why some people eventually move away because they realize that life just goes on repeat. Peak. You, you, get, you get a little house, you get a little nice Mercedes, you go into all the events. You know, it, it goes on repeat. They're just in their 50s doing their stuff. Right? Nothing wrong with that. Live your life. Enjoy good eat, eat, good restaurants, good food, good travel. Enjoy all that. So, you know, that, that's... Let me read these comments. Let me... I want to say something, but I'm, I'm going to check myself. Oh, for sure. Or for sure. I had to get on some of my family. I'm like, any kid that's under... That's eight years old to 15 needs to be a summer plan for them. I changed my career. There you go. Congratulations, Mark. I mean, you might as well live a good life. PG <laughs> and PG County, I see Mercedes C-Class cars drop the Louvre's. Yeah, because at this point, you know, they got the car they want, but did they get the other financial stuff together for the car they want? No. There you go. I'm li live and live as long as you can. Drive, enjoy yourself. I, I recommend it. Because these people on the internet have you thinking, the, the wall is at 40. No man wants women after 40. Like, what are you talking about? Like, have you been outside? Have you have you seen? Like, when you start getting older, men men don't care. They be like, hey, you got kids? you be like, no. Where you live? This side of town? You, you want to go on a date? <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be so direct. They don't even play no more. And that's why I tell people, like, if you're expecting... You know, 50s, 60s men to be over the top romantic to you or something. Don't, don't, don't be in denial. That's not what happens. But people are more direct because hey, you, know, you, you turn me down. So what? I'm gonna keep on going about my day. I got a house, a car, I don't know what. You know what I'm saying? Like people really be on that third level high school. People don't care. Gen X are free of student loans because I made a decision to pay them off decades ago. I'm telling you. Um, I, I meet people all the time that I go, how much are your student loans? I still owe twenty thousand. Girl, get that paid off in a year. Either do one part-time job and every single check of that part-time guy goes to that student loan or you have to make some type of sacrifice, right? That's why I love bringing on uh, O'Neill the other day. He's, he bought his first house at 21, bought uh, more properties at 23. Ever since his woman been with him, she ain't worked a job since the first kid. And you may say, Erica, that's because they live in Louisiana. And da, da, da. No, it's just a decision. It's a mental decision that we're going to get free. You're going to make sure these kids, you watch these kids. I'm not paying daycare goals. Be fully home for them, right? <clears throat> and so I think he's got three kids now at this point, three or four or something. I can't remember, but I think it's three. And but he set himself up that they're good. It's property they good. But what y'all gotta understand is once you start getting in motion, when you start creating deals and opportunities for yourself, people keep bringing them to you. I had three people this week try to sell me a business. And I was like, what's happening? They're like, oh, this owner lost their business, but the lease is this long and this and this. And you get all the equipment, you get all the stuff, you can make payments. Why? Because that business owner just wants to be free of the obligation of showing up every day or trying with that business. The more you emotion and the more people you talk to, it, it stays like that. Right. I, I used to go to uh, this particular real estate conference. I went there one year. This couple was together. I was like, oh, I think I remember y'all. And he's like, oh, yeah, we started dating from the last conference. And she's got kids. He's got kids. But it's like that older 40s, 50s romance, right? And it's like, it was interesting because it's like, you will meet go-getters out here. 
You should have something going for your life. You shouldn't just be sitting on a chair to watch an eight hour live stream, right? Like I, I got up today at 640 in the morning. I was like, oh my God, it's so early, but I can get all my tasks done quickly. I was done by 10 and I was like, oh my God, what am I doing for the rest of the day? Now, of course I have a list of stuff I got to do because I got to get ready. I'm going to be on the road for six weeks almost in between. But, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff that needs to get done. And once you kind of streamline your life, you just stay busy with the stuff you want. Like right now, I know an older guy, he's selling half his trucking company, not because he's in any financial just dire straits. He just doesn't want to have the headache. Same thing with a couple guys that are in real estate. The properties that give them the most headaches, they sell them to younger folks. Oh, yeah, some 25-year-old came and asked me for it. I'm like, you're going to sell it for that little? He's like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Less headache for me. You get in a different position of life. And that's why I don't think y'all understand. Like, um, When I started looking at my demographics of who was watching my channel, I was like, oh, that's cool. And I have friends who are always trying to impress 20, 30-something-year-old. I don't care what no 21-year-old got to say about me. Baby, I don't lived enough. I don't care. I know if you get really hardcore in the jet stream in a year or two, uh, some of y'all could be millionaires. Just being honest with a couple rentals. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. Uh, you know, the map, depending on the city, right? Because I had a friend be like, oh, I sold a million in houses this month. Well, that's just three houses here in Austin. If the average house is 350 to 450, if you sold three houses, yeah, you sold 1.2 million. That's just three houses. That's why when people in California be telling me, oh, I'm a million dollar listing agent. How many houses did you sell? If you're in, the, in Oakland, the Bay, you might have just sold one house for the year. And now you're a millionaire real estate agent. You see what I'm saying? So you have to be careful with the, the wording you're hearing online um, because life isn't over like that. You know what I mean? I went from accounting to nursing. Congratulations. Listen, I ain't never seen them put out an old nurse in my life. I go to the hospital, 90-year-old women barely able to move their fingers and then they're being nurses. It's crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, that's why I said that middleman to millions course. I heard this lady the other day. She started saying middleman to millions. I'm not gonna mess with her. Um, but she she changed the wording. I reached out and she changed the wording, but but it, it's not about me saying, hey, I had that first. It's me knowing that's the key of life. Half these older folks I'm meeting, they got a few little storage units, or they own a laundromat, or they own some little hole in the wall sh shop, barber shop. They ain't never in there, but they own it, and everybody gotta pay them boof rent. They fine. They live in life. They gonna be just all right. Like I don't think y'all understand. Porsche SUV Uber drivers over fifty. I see. I seen a lot. Comparison is the thief of joy for sure. I don't know, but I know there's several people buying them RVs. I've heard horror stories from owners that rented their RV. I believe it. A 20-some-year-old should be working two jobs, drilling in the National Guard Reserve in JUCO or trade school. Stay busy. Stack your paper. I'm telling you, I've got cousins who are, they went to the military. They did their four years. They came out, bought a house, no money down. Uh, they bought a few other little uh, rentals or they tried to get a trade or two. They're in their mid-30s and they're doing better than everybody they know. It, it, it's somewhere got to sacrifice. Rent out an RV and let them use your bathroom. They funky behind. <laughs> I can't. I thought of sturgeon fish. I was like, yes. No, no. Best part of being a passport boy is you do, you can't blow money on expensive toys. Can't have a sports car expensive watch. Basically. Listen, a lot of these people are like, I'm going to go live overseas. I'm like, go do it. Go live over there for a year or two. It won't hurt you. Just when you come back, you're going to still be back into the race that a lot of adults are in. They get in the car. They are living in the neighborhood. They, it's the same old, same old. Wealth is silent. New money is loud. But yeah, it ends fast. That's why when I saw all these people flashing these jets and cars, I just started laughing. I was like, y'all, let me tell you something. Some of these guys are going to be hurt in a few years financially. Hurt. Hurt. This message is right on time. I turned 46 today and life is definitely not over. We have so many options and we're living longer. Man, people living the dang on their 90 plus. Y'all better figure it out. Listen. I'd much rather be closer to 80, 85 with my teeth, my health, walking around, movement. That's why when people talk about these little companies, oh, the average business owner don't make that much money. They don't need to. Once uh, Most of these business owners start in their 40s and 50s. If they got a little cleaning company, a little cleaning business, a little uh, car wash business, something simple, they'll be 
matter. Because majority of them don't have huge overhead because they've already paid their mortgage down low. They've already paid their cars down low. They can do a little projects. That's what my grandma used to call it, projects. <coughs> Let me see here real quick. <coughs> it's so true about Atlanta. <laughs> I'm telling everybody, everybody's always like, Atlanta, Atlanta, Atlanta. And I'm like, everything I hear about Atlanta is it got full of old people. <laughs> I didn't 30. So, yes, that is the adult mindset. It's so lost in Atlanta. It's a, tra it's a trap. It's like, you know, even my thing is, even when people are older and they move to Florida and they buy a house and people make fun of them, like, oh, they're old going to Florida. They still got a house. They still got assets. They're still enjoying the beach. Right. Um, it's just there's just traps about Atlanta that I, I get it. We want to see people that look like us that are doing well in the same kind of class of people. Um, but a lot of this stuff is just on repeat. There's 265 people here. Hit the like button. Are you crazy? Heck no. Not no competent man. Why would I solicit a woman to ensure a future? See, again, that's somebody that's been on the internet too long. Going outside. You need to go outside and actually look out, look out and about. Actually go to some of these dance halls. Actually go to some of these bingo parlors. Actually go to the gym. Actually go out here to some of these events. You're going to start seeing exactly what I'm saying. Most of us close to 40 looks much younger anyway. I'm Listen, that's the crazy part. I'm telling you, if you actually look at some of the 40, 50-year-old black people and white people I've seen out here, you got to think about it. They were the last generation of mothers actually cooking dinners. Everybody that's a millennial, we we kind of suffered from the microwave dinners, TV dinners, oven dinners. I think, I think Gen X were the first TV dinner folks. But you can tell the difference. It's the quality of the food. Why are cookbooks the number one thing that's been selling for 10 years straight in America? Because motherfuckers don't know how to cook. Parents ain't taught them how to cook. They don't even know how to cut up vegetables. You know what I'm saying? Why are pre-cut vegetable soda store to save everybody time? Why are all these young black men who have cooking Instagrams making so much money? It's because other men are like single and they don't have a woman. And so they're like, how do I cook this chicken? Right? Because at some point as a man, you that's when you start encountering the diabetes, the heart attacks, the strokes, right? Because you keep eating extra salty food and not cooking for yourself. As you go into your 40s, same thing with these women, these black women. Again, I'm not talking about adults who are waddling. Let's just go there. I'm not talking about adults who can barely walk, right? I'm not talking about those folks. I'm talking about in general, folks who are generally taking care of themselves. Uh, I went on a trip and everybody there was in their 50s. I could not tell. I did not know because they take good care of themselves. It's important. It's vital. Exactly, Diamond David. It drives me crazy. I'm a million dollar agent, and I'll be like, "Oh my God, they're making so much money, man! They sold one daggone house, one house, one house in, in California." And everybody's like, "Man, you're doing so well." Nah, man, they sold one house. That's all that was. You speak sense, not everybody here. You already know. I'm 30, and I feel like I'm 19. I'm telling you, this is why. This is why when Mark in Houston, uh, who was 40 years old, married a 19-year-old, what I told people, I said, like, that's his burden. Now he has to work 20, 30 years to make sure she's taken care of, or if she leaves, he got to split that money, right? Faith Evans and CBJ just divorced. She had to pay him a million dollars alimony. Again, these are people in their daggone 50s, because y'all forget that when Biggie Smalls and them died, like when Biggie Smalls and them died, they were all 19 and 20 years old. Like, like little Kim was 19 or something like that. Uh, Faith Evans was barely 20, 21. These were young people experiencing the death of a certain type of rapper. So now you're talking about women that's, it's been 20 plus years or whatever. Not that, that long, but long enough. What is it? When did Tupac die? Somebody put the chat when Tupac died. But, but what happened is over the years, they've been able to grow, add businesses, add catalogs, do all this other stuff. And so when people see um, Stevie J get a million out of out of Faith Evans, they're like, how is that possible? Easy. Live long enough. Live long enough and keep investing. That's what happens. Massage therapists transitioning to tech. Give me six months. It's about to be up. Man, listen, massage therapists do a, a great service. But I understand. Because every massage therapist at the one building I go to, they're always talking about how they got to, um, they're going to school for something. You know, they're going to do this or they're going to do that. But Y'all, you have, if you live 70 years, let's just go 
21 minus 20 minus 70. That's 50 years of different type of working you will be doing. At least be paid well. At least get a house. At least get one vehicle. My biggest thing on Aaron Clary's thing today when he was saying at least try. Because then once you tried, you know, like, hey, man, I give it all I could give. It, you know, it's not my fault. It's the people's fault. You know, whatever you want to do. Uh, pyramid talk. I really don't have anybody investing or anything with me at this moment because everything I'm doing right now is 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 completely. I've already got partners, but you can email our staff at admin at classicclimbtx.com. That's the best I can give you. Every OnlyFans model is going to be disappointed when they make AI models watch. I mean, yeah, skills. These loud loud trucks with pipes are going crazy now. Oh, for sure. I'm telling you, real talk. People party until they're fit, <laughs> till they're in their fifties with no goals, nothing. I noticed among people, Helen. Let me tell you, I'm I'm telling me and Aaron Clary had dinner in Las Vegas um, with our our whatever, and a couple other people. I've other YouTubers. I'm having dinners with these people are literally saying the same stuff. They're like, man, these guys are girls going to get fifty years old. They just been coasting on, and they're going to have to. They're going to be like, oh shit, I got to work now in a job I hate. Like I got to have to make money now. And that's what we're going to have. We're going to have a ton of people waking up at like 51, 52. You know, they can't do, you know, this strenuous stuff. They can't do um, waitressing anymore. They can't do the easy jobs anymore. So now they got to really go do what? Either go to school, get a trade, right? Because even when you talk about people going to school, people in their 40s and 50s are like, oh, I don't have time to go to college. No, I'm not talking about college. I'm talking about a boot camp. Or certificate, you have to learn it there right then and there in that two weeks and then take your A to work. That's where we're going in an economy, right? Uh, and, and people aren't ready. They ain't ready. Florida these days is a bad move. You can't even get homers. I mean, you can. It's just going to be hella expensive. You know, and, and there's a reason they're doing that. There's, But I'll, that's another show. Yep. <laughs> Not 45. <laughs> I'm just saying, people don't realize, like, you're going to be 40, and, and so what? Like, I meet people who are 62 years old with boyfriends that are, like, 71, and they're actively traveling, riding bikes, jogging down the street, vacations at the beach. You're just sitting there like, what? Oh, my God. Oh my! That's why I feel so sorry for these young men and women who are watching some of these channels because they're wasting all their twenties and thirties being mad at women, being mad at life, not knowing this game plays forever. This game plays to you seventy. Like know your role and work within it and keep it moving. Love those pot pies, less sodium. I'm telling you, man. That's true. I get told all the time about looking. Young being 40, started getting a trainer in my 30s, expensive but working. I'm telling you, you better keep this body moving. <laughs> they don't know how to make grits or grits is sad. I'm telling you. Love that vans are selling for cheap on Craigslist. Oh, yeah. I turned 27 this year and people are telling me I'm old. <laughs> Again, we we don't have the cultural community to tell our young men and women, hey, you know, you're getting a little older. Might be time for you to wrap that up. I'm meeting women who are 43 talking about they gonna have they can still have kids maybe in a year or two. Now listen, I I, I believe in black is magical and black don't crack. But at the end of the day, your parents and your family did not family you. They didn't say, "Hey, young lady, you know that train starts to dry up." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might not want to do that, or not even just that, but the fact that you're saying you want a brand new baby at 45. Who is gonna be your kids playmates who are your kids gonna spend time with do they have any little cousins they age like you start having to have these real questions and so that's why i say people that are 40 to 70 kid free you know usually have a lot more options like they just they out there living they go on to exercise they go on to bingo they go on to charity events they volunteer and they live in life this is what it is get your blood in your analysis yep Kidneys pressure. I'm telling you, man, I walked two miles this morning. And I was like, all right, what else am I going to do today? I get all my list done. 1996. Yeah. So so we're talking about, man, 2006. And then a couple years, it'll be what, 20 years? Wait, wait. Y'all help me do the math. 
This, well, long story short, they've been dead a, a while. 96. So, they they were dead longer than they were alive. Exactly. It, you know. There you go. Went to the hood to get catfish. Saw a beautiful elder, older lady, early 50s. Her wig, makeup, outfit was on point. I saw her walking in, in speedy cash. Damn. No, not speedy cash. No. I don't want to be like that at her age. Creepy. Yeah. So, so again, you know, speedy cash is a, is a uh, what we call that? Fast cash place. What would we call those places? Predatory lending places. The problem is if you aren't educated on your money and investments, you'll wake up and emergency will happen. Um, and it's unfortunate. People get really in bad spots because there's not in great shape. Don't sleep on recreational centers. I'm telling you, big money coming into that. Talking to a 19 year old is a headache in itself, much less being married to one. Bless him. I said, listen, big was 24. Yeah, but little Kim and Faith was young. Like little Kim was like 19. Like little Kim still has some of Biggie Small's clothes in her closet. Like, and I'm like, girl, damn, that's some love. You done had a children, a family. 70 years, everybody know in my past. Listen, I promise you, that's what I'm telling you. I keep telling people, like, if you really look at healthcare, you look at people that can cook and have gardens, like all the little old people I know have a garden back in North Carolina. They 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 cutting their own, they getting their own vegetables out the ground, they mix making salsa. Boy, I'm telling y'all, they're gonna live a long time. You know, so they'll they'll they've been in a house 30 years, go around the corner, buy another house, rent that house out, it's stuff like that. <laughs> I'm not paying no cheating ass dude, alimony. Dude's gonna get an accident. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go, 996. People aren't going to have a chance to work anywhere else. Listen, you're always going to need somebody to fix pipes, fix windows, fix doors. Um, and we have a generation of people that don't want to fix anything. You're always going to need people that can fix ice makers and refrigerators and microwaves and people that can fix roofs. The reason housing is so expensive is we don't, we're literally importing the labor to do the labor. Uh, you're going to start seeing a return of 40, 50, 60 year old men working in handyman related services, even if it, they're training younger people to do the work. Right. When I tell you about all the people I know that have like a lawn care business and they don't cut any grass, they just pick the guys up and the young guys are just glad to have a job in the summer and be working and wearing, them, you know, work clothes and getting a check. A lot of that. You're going to see a lot of that. Your class reunion shows you how well you've been taking care of yourself. That's one. That's one way to see it. They better get ready. They better get ready. There you go. Congratulations. 27 is a baby. How do I feel about build the rent communities? You're going to see a lot more of them. Y'all going to see a ton of 55 year old plus communities and you're going to see a ton of um, build the rent because people don't really want to like, oh, I saved, we saved this money or we, you know, here's the biggest issue. And I try to forget who said this, but, oh, it was Henry Washington. I watched the video earlier. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, my credit score or I can't afford it or I can't get a mortgage. And they ask him, who told you that? Nobody. These goofy balls haven't even been pre-approved. They don't even turn in their taxes. Like I had to fight with somebody I know. I was just like, just let them tell you no. Stop trying to decide what they're going to say. Oh, they're going to tell me no. You don't know that till you try. You don't know that till you ask. There's over 5,000 mortgage programs. 5,000. And people steady telling me, well, you don't know. I can't get approved. What it is is they don't want to be pre-approved for a price that really tells them that, bitch, you're broke. You're broke. You can only afford 312. I have a friend that keeps telling me, I can only afford like 305. And I was like, dude, that's nowhere in Austin. You're going to have to live in Cal, Buda, Georgetown. You're going to have to live further north or until in a townhouse. What do you want to do? Oh, I don't want to be in a townhouse. That's the problem. People want to have a mansion as their first home. No one believes in a starter home anymore. Because they waited so damn late in life. And now they're frustrated. So that's why you're going to have more builder rent communities. Because it gives a, a, somebody who doesn't want to take a risk. Doesn't want to be responsible. A way to live in a house with their kids. And not feel like, woo. I didn't do what I was supposed to fucking do. So that I could. What? Live in a house I want. I'm renting a house. And my kids feel like they're a part of a regular neighborhood. 
but I really didn't take any sacrifices. Florida was one of those places that caused 2008 home recession because of home insurance and scams, but it's so much to look into what caused it. Right. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So, you know, the insurance company is refusing to insure parts of California, <clears throat> insure parts of Florida. What it's going to do is it's going to birth, because we are a capitalist country, smaller insurance firms that are going to, um, they're going to want to make money, but they're going to want to get a discount, right? So let's say the, you know, all state, I'm not trying to bash any company. Let's say all states, like, yeah, it's going to be six grand for the year. Well, you're going to call around if you care about your damn money, maybe you don't, and try to find somebody who's going to charge you less, right? And so there's always going to be a company that pays for less. Now, they're also going to pay for less benefits, but they'll pay for less and you'll pay, you know, pay them for cheap services. And so that's why when everybody always cries about the insurance companies, I go, all this is going to do is birth more insurance companies. But again, they have to be backed by somebody. So, you know, that, that part too. <laughs> there you go. Listen, I love playing music when I cook. And uh, my significant other is like, go ahead, play your music. Like whenever I start getting ready to start dinner, I look back, they turn the TV down, I'll turn the music up and we just go on about our day, you know? Uh, no, I advocate for people having kids for sure. I advocate every day for people having kids. Uh, I'm going into a phase of life here where I'm having kids. And, and I basically was like, what's the number I need to go sit at the house for the next three years? And not be worried and not be stressed. Oh, I just need this build this many duplexes and build one apartment complex. And this, that's it. I'm done. Peace out. Like, I already know my math. And I'm just working my math down for the next 11 months. So, I earned my BS in cybersecurity at 57. I got a six-figure offer. Congratulations. <laughs> My part-time job has a ton of older ladies, ones hunched over working. Yep. I was think I am thinking of investing in Macon, Georgia. Just got my LLC. Congratulations. You can do it. When I'm 55. <laughs> I mean, but that's just, just it. Everybody thinks um they're gonna get 55 and they're gonna move there. But yeah, when I when I hear from kids who are 20 and 30 and like, I'll never get married, I'll never have kids, and life is just terrible and modern women, I go. First of all, you need to check your testosterone levels because that's not even a normal response to just your daily natural body urge. Like, oh, women, nice. You know what I mean? Like, like you're you're going in reverse, buddy. You need to go get your hormones checked out. But every study shows that there's issues right now. People's testosterone and in and, and hormone levels, and that's because of the food. And I won't go too far. And the water. Hit dog. I've been turned down for pre-approval twice and still can't make myself leave Southern California. There you go. You already know. You know what you got to do. It's just up to you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. Listen, there you go, guys. I mean, again, that's what I had for you. Didn't have a ton. Um, there's some content coming out this week where I'll be going to Las Vegas. Uh, hopefully, I'll get to meet some cool stuff while I'm out there. NBA stuff. But at the end of the day, like a lot of Americans aren't saving for retirement because guess what? They think they're just going to keep working and working until that's why you meet people who are 65 still working, 75 people who are still working, 80 year old people that are still working because they didn't save for retirement. They bought the cars and, and clothes and stuff they liked and they just got to eat that bullet. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, end of the day, and for those of you who are paying attention, it's better to do it early. It's better to get a couple rentals under your belt in a nice area that's got, per, you know, productiveness, you know what I mean? Not just a bunch of bums and keep it moving for sure. So anyways, uh, thank you guys for coming out today. <laughs> yeah, women's, women's, women's. That's what they like talking about. Um, but yeah, for sure. So anyways, you guys, this is your Erica Classic on blog. Go check back out the uh, interview I did the other day with O'Neill Parker. Such great gems. You guys don't miss what he was saying there. And uh, I hope and I hope a lot of you have a good day for sure, because it's a little warm out here. <laughs>